Hi everyone, welcome to the next health tip. So we're on the third issue of the th three substitutions that can simply or easily make a big dramatic change in your life and in your health. And this week we're talking about sugars and things that turn into sugar. And that's probably the more important part of the talk, so I'll get to that in a minute. So obviously, you know, sugar is everywhere right now. And uh, it is not so much maybe like that one teaspoon that you add to your coffee or whatever it is, hopefully not too much, too much more than that. But a lot of it's the hidden sugars that are just found in so much of the processed food. You'd be surprised where you're finding sugar. And uh, so if anybody's got the uh, cellular healing book that we, we've been selling in the office, the, the audio CD in that, he goes over a lot of the um, things that you don't know are actually sugar. Like any, basically anything that has O-S-E on the end of it, like dextrose, sucrose, fructose, lactose, malatose, all of those oses are pretty much all sugars. And uh, you can find them in almost everything. And surprisingly, in things that you wouldn't think would be there, like, a, for example, barbecue sauce or, you know, ketchup is kind of sweet. But things that are actually kind of sour or, or not really, like, sweet, they're putting sugar in it. And it's it's really, a, a, they, they found this thing that they call the bliss point in people's brain, where the, the right amount of saltiness and the right amount of sweetness put, in, put it into a packaged product. It makes people's brains light up and makes them not not get enough of it and want more of it all the time in order to get you to go back all the time. So, you know, that, that's a big challenge. So, you know, I think most people are aware of that, but they're saying, well, what can I do instead? So most health experts are probably pushing towards stevia as the number one um, sugar substitute, if you want to call it that. Um, but the problem is, uh, even stevia can have its problems too. So stevia itself comes from a, a herb so it's like you know I've pulled I've seen the plant and you, you know you pull pull the leaf off and if you chew the leaf it's actually sweet so it's kind of interesting that it is but uh, most of the stevia that you will buy in the stores are like a white powder so obviously it's gone through quite a bit of a refining process to become that that powder so there are some brands and I've showed it to you before if you look for an organic um, raw organic stevia it should actually be green so the stevia that I have at home is actually like, it's a green powder because it's basically the, the plant that's been desiccated and dried up and that's about it, right? So if I take like the sugar cane, that might not be so bad if I'm trying to like, you know, suck on the sugar cane plant, but then you refine it and it becomes white sugar, which is probably one of the biggest poisons that exists in our, <laughs> in our food chain sort of thing, right? So we're going through that, that refining process. So that's one, and you can also find liquid stevias, which has probably, you know, had gone through some alcohol and some other processing. You know, I still do have the liquid one just for convenience and certain um, cooking and, you know, certain liquids and things like that. It's convenient to have it, and they have some that are flavored as, as well. Um, but, you know, obviously the, the, the end sort of uh, backlash for stevia is that it has this aftertaste and doesn't taste that good for some people and those kind of things. Sometimes, surprisingly enough, if you add a little bit of salt, remember I talked about the sugar and the salt, if you add um, like uh, real salt or Himalayan salt to some of the recipes that have stevia in it, sometimes it takes that um, funny bite off of it. Another one that's pretty popular now that it's gaining a little bit more um, traction, I think, it's, it's something called monk fruit. And it's a, basically, conceptually, I think, like over in Asia somewhere, there was an old uh, sort of Japanese... Um, guy who was diabetic and he said, you know, find me, like he might have been like a king or something. He says he just told them, find me a substitute for my sugar basically. And so they found this fruit called monk fruit. And there's also it's also called low hand go. And the the extract from this fruit apparently doesn't raise your blood sugar levels at all. It has no impact on your glycemic index and all those kind of things. So they've been able to make you know like a brown sugar and a white sugar from this monk fruit. So I use this one a little bit quite often with, you know, if I'm sweetening like a, a warm tea or whatever it is, I'll be using that one quite often too. This one doesn't dissolve very well if you're trying to make um, baked goods or something like that. So that's a bit of an issue there, but you know, if you're putting it in a hot liquid, it dissolves normally and that kind of thing. Um, there's also something I've been aware of, and I've read the ingredients a number of times, and a friend of mine when I was in Italy, he told me about it a bit, and it might be okay, I'm not sure. Ingredients-wise, it looks okay. So it's basically, it's, it's called Just Like Sugar, and it has inulin, which is like, um, it's a, we call it a prebiotic, sometimes people call it chicory root, so that's a, that's a fiber that uh, it's uh, sweet, but your body can't utilize it. It does help the bacteria, the good bacteria in your, in your intestines as well, so we sometimes call it a prebiotic. 
So it has inulin, it's got calcium, it's got uh, orange peel essence, and uh, that's about it really. There's a, just a few ingredients in it. So I'm a little curious because it just says calcium, so I, I would presume it's probably calcium carbonate, which isn't the best kind of calcium to be putting in your body. I'm not sure, it just lists it as calcium, so I'm not totally sure that it's good, but it could be a possibility. And obviously you can get uh, coconut sugar, for, if you get organic coconut sugar from coconut, you know, you're going to get from a fairly good source and that might have a slower uh, low glycemic load. Organic raw honeys might also be a good option as well for some people that might like that. So those are some of your alternatives for sugar. But the second sort of branch are the things that become sugar and that's where people get a little confusion. If you go back to my video number two on the substitutions, it was we were substituting meats. So surprisingly enough, if you eat too much protein or too much meat or too much protein in, in a meal, your body can do something called gluconeogenesis. Neo meaning new, so gluco meaning glucose. Your body's actually forming new glucose from that excess amino acid load that's coming into the body. So sometimes if you're eating too much meat, too much protein, your body will actually produce sugar from that as opposed to utilizing it for muscle tissue or re regenerating or repairing your body. So that's why I mentioned in the meat video, you know, if you're getting the higher quality meats that cost more, but you should actually be eating less of it, basically. So that's the little catch-22 with the meats and that. And what's the other big thing that turns into sugar? Unfortunately, it's grains. And I've mentioned this in other videos and some of you might remember this. If you take a piece of bread, um, white bread, brown bread, it really doesn't matter. As soon as you put it into your mouth, the enzymes here break it down and it almost becomes like a super sugar. And uh, when when they look at what they call glycemic index, you know, how does your blood sugar rise up in your blood after you've eaten a meal? Like a piece of white bread kind of rises up just like you took like a couple of teaspoons of sugar just like this. So grains, almost all grains will basically break down and become sugars pretty rapidly in your system. And it was kind of funny when they were looking at that glycemic index, like how quickly your blood sugar rises. They actually gave people rice cakes, which they thought were going to be pretty good, and they compared it to ice cream. And the people that ate the rice cakes, their blood sugar levels went up really, really quickly, but the ice cream actually went up quite slowly. And they said, how can that be? I thought ice cream wasn't good for you, and the rice cakes were the big health food of the time back then, in the, you know, the late 80s and stuff. So the problem is, the rice cakes are just kind of like straight carbs, basically. <laughs> so it, you know, gets in your system, your body turns it in, the amylase protein breaks it all down, and, or the amylase enzyme, and then you got all this big spike in sugar. Even though there's a lot of sugar in the ice cream, the fat in the ice cream actually slowed down the absorption of the sugar into your system. So when you have fats with these things, it can actually slow down the intake of those sugars into your blood and cause less of a, a spike. So I'm not necessarily recommending people that eat a lot of ice cream, but I'm just saying that that can happen. So um, the other thing is uh, basically grains. So if we need to do like grain substitutions, I mentioned this before, obviously you don't want to be eating regular white bread and brown bread and stuff like that. That's all full of glyphosate and pesticides and all sorts of horrible things. So obviously the ideal, if we can find sprouted ancient grains, so you want to be looking for things that say stone ground whole wheat or stone ground whole grains or sprouted ancient grains, those are kind of the ideal things. Those still cause blood sugar spikes and all the other things, but if you want to make a better substitution for a better grain, and if you still need to eat grains, obviously, that's the thing. Obviously, ideally, people we shouldn't be eating it much of it at all, really, it's not really part of our diet. But, you know, it's all out there, you know, tortilla wraps and wraps and, you know, sandwiches and hamburger buns and all that stuff. So there's more and more of the health substitutions for those things. So you want to look for, you know, what we call sprouted whole grain, ancient grains. Ancient grains would be things like buckwheat, amaranth, amaranth um, uh, quinoa is a seed. So that sometimes they use that as well. So those are some of the main ones that you can look for. So that's your health tip for this week. Try to get that sweet tooth pushed over to some of the alternatives. Try to do less of it and be careful of excess proteins and excess grains in your diet. I look forward to next week's health tip. Bye-bye.